This episode of Bouts Talking Bouts is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Winning parlays. If you're looking for them in BKFC, you got to be checking out BK Bet Shark. Here's the thing. $50 buys, you get a personalized bet slip. It's based on your own budget. You can be flexible. It is what works for you. And this guy's got the receipts. You can check out all the winning tickets. You can peep them, and you can do so at Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Check him out on Instagram and get with it. Got them personalized betting slips going on, $50 buys. All right, on this episode of Bare Knuckle Radio, very excited to be talking to an individual who competes at BKFC Prospect Series 2 going down in the UK October the 14th. And we've got a very intriguing bantamweight bout as Taryn Turner knuckles up and toes the line against John O, Chip Chase, and great having John O on the show. How's your day going so far, man? Very good, mate. I've just finished my second session and, um, just excited to fight soon, to be honest. Yeah, and I saw you had a post a bit ago where you were talking about how bare knuckle was made for you and you really, you know, can't wait to show it to the masses. Like, what do you, like, what do you mean by that? Can you expound upon it a bit more? Like you were saying, like, this is a sport that really suits all your strengths. I'm curious to, you know, get a deeper understanding of what you mean by that. Of course. Uh, well, in, in Muay Thai, um, in the British scene, I'm known particularly for having very strong, very powerful hands. I'm known for being very durable and very tough. And I'm known for being very tenacious and aggressive, particularly in the last sort of stage of parts of my career, the last few years. So, in looking at Ben Uckler and looking at how it's sort of developing and evolving, particularly people like, uh, like I said, originally like Mike Perry and people, like the way he's working and moving, I thought for me it would be absolutely ideal because, as I said, my strengths are my hands, my durability, my tenacity. I'm a fit, strong guy, and I can't wait to show people just how strong and just how fit. I'm curious to get a bit of a sense of the timeline for this one, too, because you were talking about a card that had previously fallen through, and you were saying, like, you could have maybe waited for another main card but decided to be a company man and headline this. Like, what was the whole, I guess, timeline with that? Because apparently, based on your post, you were saying you had five prospective matches fall through, two event changes. Just curious to get a deeper sense of the timeline heading into this fight. Yeah, no worries. So uh, I fought on the Hitman Fight League, which is a great Muay Thai card, um, I think like four or five months ago or something like that. And then uh, after after I had that performance, I thought, right, uh, what am I going to do next? And I was looking in the Thai scene, I was looking about things to do. And I thought, you know what, I might as well make the jump now and go to Bear Knuckle, right? Because it's what I want to do. I'm 32 now, so I'm not a spring chicken. I've had 42, 43 professional fights, I've had loads of amateur fights. So it's time to sort of jump. So uh, I messaged the promoter and I was like, you know, what do you think about getting me on? What do you think about having me? And he was like, yeah, there's a lad actually over there who's doing big things called Robbie Brown. He went, I know that'll be a good fight because obviously he knows I'm tough. He's, uh, Andy Bakewell's been part of the Thai scene for a long time too, as well as the bare knuckle scene. So um, he was just interested in, interested in sort of getting me on against Robbie. Me and Robbie were supposed to fight in Leeds. But then there was an offer for us both to fight a bit earlier on the Milton Keynes card. So I was like, yeah, that's even better, right? And I think he was down for that too. He was excited about it. Unfortunately, um, I'm not sure of the, the whys or the wires or anything. The Milton Keynes card fell through. Um, it happened in Thai boxing too. It happens. It's the fight business. Stuff like that happens. Um, so then it was like, well, when can I fight next? When sort of can be the soonest time I can fight? Um, I know Robbie was also going back and forth with somebody else, and no, he, he kind of wanted that fight as well. I just munched in fighting, to be fair. I'm not really asked who or where or anything. The sooner the bell. So then when um, I spoke to the motor again, he got back to me with his car, and I was like, yeah, sweet, let's go, let's go. Sooner the bell. Now, obviously, I could have waited and said, I don't really want to be a part of that car. I'll wait for maybe a, a big one or something like that, but I thought, nah, I'll, I'll jump at the opportunity while I can. Yeah, and it seems like, I mean, you mentioned the Thai experience. It seems like you're still very involved in Muay Thai. Like I saw even within that post I was referencing, you have a big fight in that sport at the start of next year. So good to see you're able to, you know, keep a certain rate of activity after all those, you know, cancellations and whatnot. Yeah, well, the cancellations were, it was more like, 
yeah, to sort of clarify on that, I'd been offered after um, Robbie applauded got switched when when Keane's card fell through. I got offered another guy. Who's, I won't say the names because I'm uh, I'm not sure the issue is why they pulled out. One of them was an MMA guy. He's a very high level MMA guy. Actually, a guy from Manchester who's a big name in MMA. It's just called him out recently. So I thought, oh, that would be a big fight and then for some reason or other he couldn't make the fight then I got offered a professional boxer somebody's had professional boxing experience and he had a good record I was like yeah sweet I'll fight him and then he couldn't fight and then there was another lad who I think broke his hand or he'd, he'd already had a fight uh, previously before that and he ended up um, finding out that he had a broken hand and he looked like he looked decent as well so all them I was down for I said yes to instantly and then finally, I've been offered um, this Taran fellow. And in terms of Muay Thai, yeah, I'm supposed to be fighting um, February next year. But it depends on how the bare knuckle goes, to be honest, because I'm very excited about it. It's, it's a, a sport which is exploding, and uh, I really do think it suits me down to the ground. You know, it's, I'm not one of those people who are going to shy away from, from damage and things. I know a lot of fighters, and you see it in fighters, particularly I've seen it in this sport, but you see it a lot even in my sport, where if somebody's not seen their inside, their own face, or if they've not seen their own blood, or if they've not had bones broken and things like that, they can, uh, when that happens to them, it can shake them a little bit. Whereas I've been through all of that in my career. I don't get shook. So um, if this goes as well as I think it's going to, I'm sure it will. And I get offered another fight, I'll probably just stick with the BKFC, to be honest. Well, I mean, that's exciting to hear just in the sense of the wealth of overall combat sports experience you bring just nearly 70 fights across like amateur and whatnot. So exciting to hear that the fire for bare knuckle is to that scale. Oh, yeah, it is. Like I said, I know a lot of the champions are quite old and they come from MMA backgrounds. And obviously with me being a part of the sport, I have uh, Muay Thai for so long. I've sparred with very high level Hey guys, over the years, world champions, very high level kickboxers, very high level Muay Thai, beyond even my fighting. And I've always fought the best when I've fought, you know. So my last opponent, for example, is now 2 and 0 in 1. I only fought him a few bloody months ago. Uh, the, the guy I fought before that, he's uh, ranked top 10 in the world. Um, the guy I fought before that is a very high ranked fighter in the UK. Uh, and they're all top, top level fighters. But for me, I love Muay Thai, and I will always love Muay Thai. But before I became a Muay Thai, I, think I only became one because I was getting into trouble having too many scraps. Too many scraps, but an uncle, so the fact that I can get paid for it, and the fact that the promotion is becoming now more official, um, and it's, I can see it really trying to do it the proper way, I thought this is an ideal time for me to jump on. And I'd be curious to get your thoughts on this because just as someone who appreciates combat sports like more from like a layman kind of perspective it would seem like the uk muay thai style is just such a great base to transfer into bare knuckle like obviously the presence of the active clinch is something that pops up there but there's just something about that like you know fervent kind of approach like there's obviously obviously still the fight iq and things like that that underpins it and you're not over extending yourself but it seems like that uk muay thai style is like more oriented to like that pressure cooker like really set the pace as opposed to like the traditional Thai style where maybe a couple of the earlier rounds are like you know fielding things out a little bit like getting the the betting in the arena going or things of that kind of ilk so I guess just in saying all of that like how much do you think this like UK certain like Muay Thai style translates to bare knuckle I mean I guess you'll ultimately find out when you fight but I would think that even in the prep it would seem to translate Massively so, massively so, because the UK style, UK Muay Thai, is probably, I used to say, apart from Thailand, but now I'll say alongside, if not better than Thailand, the UK Muay Thai scene has exploded to that degree now, because our style is, is generally hand-heavy, and the Western style is very hand-heavy, because obviously we've always been uh, involved in love boxing. Um, and uh, it's definitely more of a style of sort of fighting, proper fighting as well. Not like you said, as the ties do, we'll tip tap and we'll find the range and then we'll generally up it in, in the later rounds for the gamblers. Uh, the UK Muay Thai scene has always been very aggressive like that. It's 
a lot of old school fighters that sort of brought that through. And to, to nowadays, you know, we've got a lot of fighters smashing it because of that reason. People like uh, Jonathan Haggerty, Nico Carrillo, Stevie Irvine, who's one of my previous opponents. These are all killing it in one championship because they're very hand heavy. They're very good Thai boxers as well. I mean, Haggerty's a stylist with his teeps and things. But look what he did to Nonga with his hands. Uh, Nico's got really nice switch hit and stuff, really nice kick up. But look what he did to a lot of his last opponents with his hands. And Steve is a great, great stylist, probably the most technical fighter I've ever fought. And look what he's doing to people. It is, it is no surprise there, is there? And in the UK scene, I'm known as one of them, one of the fighters with the best hands, with the most dangerous hands. And I'm also known as for pretty much anybody at tough fight because I don't really go away. I don't really get stopped much. I've only ever been KO'd once in my entire life. So it's like, it's perfect for me, I reckon. But perfect for UK Muay Thai as well. And in just talking about the stylistic attributes you bring, curious to get your thoughts on just, you know, what your opponent is bringing to the table here, Taron Turner, because trying to do like a bit of, you know, cursory research on him I wasn't quite like finding quite as much maybe I mean it seems like he's obviously game and ready for you know the opportunity but just curious if maybe you've I guess seen tape on Taron Turner before this fight and maybe have a sense of like what he brings stylistically perhaps I've seen bits um I've not seen much to be fair uh I, first time I really heard much about him was yesterday when he did the um the podcast with it in the red corner. Now, he is a game lad, and I appreciate that, because I need somebody to fight. So the fact he's stepped up, I, I can't be nothing but, you know, thankful to the lad. But his style, from what I've seen him fighting, is sort of very... stands very tall, even for a boxer. And he seems to be quite tall, quite rangy. Seems to be quite fast. But I'm pretty sure in this bare-knuckle situation, that sort of gangly tall style against somebody who's my size and my power ratio, my durability, it's not going to go very long, I don't think, to be honest. I think I'm going to get him out of there early. And I know I talked to some fighters where, like, the visualization is a big thing. Like, in saying you think the finish might come early, do you almost have, like, a particular round you're visualizing that transpiring in, or just a general sense of, I could see just the knockout happening and it's not like a specific round that the thought is existing in, I guess. I can just see, to be honest, when I start landing my bones on his head, I can see him not wanting it anymore. There's a massive difference between, obviously, amateur boxing and uh, white collar boxing and even professional boxing. It's more lumps in that. And you go from that to Muay Thai where there's elbows, shins to the head, knees to the head, things like that. It's far more visceral and brutal. And bare knuckles more like that, but even more pinned and honed down. So while he'll have the experience on me in terms of traditional boxing, boxing's my forte anyway in terms of I box Thai boxers. You have to know the whole thing to be able to do that. You have to be able to block and clinch and do all these things. But the way I unsettle and hurt people is I use my hands, you know, not long ago, I dropped two people with the first punches that I threw back to back. I've stopped and dropped loads of people recently with my hands. I think I dropped maybe my last six opponents. Um, I probably dropped out of them. I've had probably maybe six, eight counts in that. So it's why I've dropped them with my hands, you know. So it's one of them where, even though he's game, and I appreciate him taking it, and afterwards we'll definitely have a beer and... Uh, you know, I wish him well in his career. I think a young lad uh, going from out of your box into bare knuckle and fighting somebody as seasoned and as dangerous as I am, I just can't see it going very long, to be honest. Okay, I get what you mean when you lay it out like that. I guess I'm curious to maybe see if there's some differentiation in the prep because just doing my backgrounding on you, it seems like Manchester Fighters Academy has, you know, understandably been a key spot for you and just seeing you working with people like Anthony Lloyd and Lewis Green and stuff like that. Like how much does, I guess, a bare knuckle boxing camp as far as how you're curating the whole thing differ at all from how you might say pursue like a Muay Thai camp? Like, is there a great deal of difference? Obviously the kicks and elbows are subverted, but even in like the, you know, hands portion of the game, like, is there any, you know, different aspects you're adding to the camp perhaps? A lot, because I have a lot of respect for the sport, and the more I watch it, I, there's a lot of fighters that I've been watching recently. One of my favourites is Tyler Goodchild, he's a great fighter. But what I've noticed,
this when I'm watching and when I'm working with people is the footwork is far more important. Thai boxing footwork is very important too, but it's different, you see. For me, that's almost second nature because I've been doing it since I was a kid. So going into sort of purely boxing, even though I have in the past often boxed with people, just pure boxing rounds, I normally do that in camp once a week anyway, to be honest. Um, really focusing and honing on it has been uh, the footwork specifically has been eye-opening for me to be honest you can get in better positions obviously you can duck and use your head differently too because you can't really do that in time because you might just walk into a knee you have to be a very very tricky fighter to be able to do the boxing style rolling in Muay Thai only somebody like someone Cam Singh can do something like that not a lot of other people can do it because they don't have the eye for it they just generally walk into something so the, the defensive strategies are massively different even from boxing but particularly in terms of away from Thai boxing um, and the way you can attack too and sort of the damage I'll be able to do because usually I'll use my hands and then I'll have to sort of divert and move away from them because then in Thai boxing people can do stuff like if I'm using my hands a lot they can low kick or they can keep, keep me away, they can body kick, and they can try and wear me down and sort of not let me use my hands as much in ways that will negate and then sort of weaken my attacks over the period. So I have to sort of change and defend and go on my legs again and go to the clinch and then use my hands again. Whereas in this, because it's just been purely handwork, I'm re really finding that I'm even better than I assumed I would be here, to be honest. And secondarily, the fitness aspect, because it's shorter rounds than I'm used to. So I've just been isolated, particularly recently, in the last three weeks, this is where the specificity will really up, because I've got a decent base now of fitness. Lewis helped me with that, to be honest. Uh, he came to the gym uh, a few months ago when we had a first spa, and even though I was fit, he was super fit, and I was like, fuck, I need to get working on this now, and I need to get even fitter, because yeah. I don't know what's going to come up next. Uh, and then Nate Lloyd has helped me a lot because he's an ex-amateur who's got professional experience. He's helped me a lot as well with just ideas and concepts of how regular boxing um, attacks and defence could be used possibly in bare knuckle. And then I've also been working with uh, Kevin Morris, who is um, very well known. Uh, he was a very good boxer, a boxing trainer. He's got his pro licence, but he's also from a Muay Thai background as well. He fought Ramon Deckers and things like that. He was my first coach, oddly. And um, he even uh, uh, played, I think, one of Danny Christie's fights. So he's even been and seen a lot of that. He's an overall martial artist, you see. So getting his... We've been able to pick his mind and then getting him to work with me on his concepts of what would work in bare knuckle has been very interesting. And then obviously my old man is my head coach and my main coach, and he has a great eye and a great mind for developing not only conditioning stuff, but then also hand drills and fitness stuff. And specifically even in the hand stuff, it's been different. So now I've been doing a lot of fast work with the hands, and then the next day I might do slow but powerful. The next day I might be touching and doing reflex work. It's all been, it's been a learning curve, to be honest, but I've really enjoyed it, and it has differed quite a bit from Muay Thai camp. Yeah, and I just love the way you're analyzing it. Like, the depth of detail is intriguing. I guess I'm curious to kind of ask about this. Like, maybe it's like a similar interfacing thing going on. But I was noticing on your social media that you're a master of research and meta philosophy. Like, do you find that combat sports almost maybe fires off similar parts of your brain there? Like, it is like a very, like, cerebral kind of like analytical activity to you that maybe fires off something similar? Or does it almost appeal to, like, a different kind of set of synapses or thought processes, etc. No, I would say you're probably right there. I've always been very um, very acute with my, the way I analyse things. So I said it yesterday, but it's true. First thing we sort of got in there, you know, a lot of people would have noticed is those ropes are bloody, they don't move. So then instantly I was thinking in my head, right, so you can't lean on the ropes, but if I get somebody against those ropes, they're gone, they're, they're out of there, understanding those types of things. My mind always works that way, particularly with fighting. That's why I've been able to win the latter part of my career in Muay Thai, even with sort of, in some people would say the limited sort of attacks which I do because I'm more hand happy and stuff, I'm still gonna have great success because I can analyze my opponents even without watching them watch and just get a general good idea of what I need to work on, my old man's the same, what, I, what we need to work on, to sort of get the best out of it. Now, I'm not, I don't have a master's in philosophy, but my first, I would say my first master's is probably in fighting. I was much harder to get than the, the master's in 
Roman philosopher. But um, it did help me because it did help me question ideas and sort of analyse and break down concepts um, individually and together and then sort of be able to apply them. So it's, it's definitely an amalgamation of the two, I reckon. Yeah, I mean, it definitely comes across, which is why I thought to ask. But just, yeah, i love to hear that and just really interesting to, you know, see this level of fight IQ and approach heading into a debut effort. I mean, definitely not surprising because of the wealth of experience you have in Muay Thai, as we were talking about, but definitely lends itself well to what would seem like a very intriguing debut in a lot of regards. But yeah, been really great having you on, John. Oh, it's been fun getting to talk to you and get these great insights from you, but just in wanting to be mindful of your time and schedule, I'm curious if maybe there's like a final thought you'd want to kind of add as where sort of wrapping things up here, man. Um, yeah. If anybody who's listening, I'm assuming they're involved in the bare knuckle scene, but if they're not, if they're not subscribed, if they don't follow you, I hope they do that. If you want to jump along and follow my journey, you can as well. Um, as I said, I'll probably be um, exiting Thai boxing now and sticking to the bare knuckle because I like the scene as well, to be honest. There's some interesting characters in, in Muay Thai is because it's, it's the reason my one's doing so well in Asia is because it's, it's predicated on you know respect and that and that very um, Asian sensibility of you can't be what people perceive to be disrespectful. This sport is not anywhere near past the lines of say something like MMA, where at the moment it's become a little bit circusy. Or even even celebrity boxing now, where it's become a little bit circusy. People are saying things where really they shouldn't. It's gone a bit too far in that regard, in my in my my opinion um this is sort of toes the line for me beautifully where you can say what you want to do because it's a fight in it and it's a bare knuckle fight but you don't have to be a dick about it you can just say it sort of yeah as it is which i like i like that a lot i also like the idea of just being able to throw down and see who the better man is in a way that i would if somebody confronted me in the world do you know what i mean it's this ideal for me in that sense I, I, I love it but i also love the fact that it's becoming uh, and getting more and more uh, into the sort of the limelight of being a very proper sport, you know what I mean? I like that as well. I like how it's, it's building. I'm a big fan of it. And uh, the fact I've been given an opportunity to display my skills on it, I can't wait, mate. Yeah, well, I mean, based on the enthusiasm with which you're discussing it, I would maybe hazard a guess that this could be the first of perhaps a few appearances on you know, bare knuckle radio, but until then, very much excited for October 14th and seeing this Taron Turner fight at BKFC Prospect Series 2, and yeah, it should be a great bantamweight bout, no doubt, but until then, man, thank you for making the time and giving those great insights, as I mentioned, but can't hurt to reiterate, but yeah, you have a great day, and just thank you for the time. Thank you for the time too, mate. I really appreciate it, and I hope everyone comes down to watch. Like I said, the lad is game, and he really has not respect for taking this fight he genuinely does he genuinely does he's, 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 a, he's, he's got a big heart on him so I respect him for that yeah for sure definitely comes across man and just very much excited for when you get out there and yeah just to see the skill set and everything and very excited to see this fight with Taron Turner as I said and yeah no thanks for the time man and just have a good rest of your day Jono thank you you too mate have a good day this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Winning parlays, if you're looking for them in BKFC, you got to be checking out BK Bet Shark. Here's the thing, $50 buys, you get a personalized bet slip. It's based on your own budget. You can be flexible. It is what works for you. And this guy's got the receipts. You can check out all the winning tickets. You can peep them, and you can do so at Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Check him out on Instagram and get with it. Got them personalized betting slips going on, $50 buys.